right so let's get into this teaching today so in third john verse two so i know what it means because you know i get the request that i'm frustrated i pray the lot and i can't see any changes some people are frustrated that i'm married to a man that's a good christian boy cannot provide for the family it's a single girl that is writing me and saying that um i don't know why god doesn't like me but god seemed to hate me and i will say why does god hate you they'll say just because of the financial conditions i go through why there are those people that are going through extreme financial difficulty there are also people that it's not extreme but they're stuck they have a nice house they have nice cars they can pay the children's school fees but they are still way behind they are still way behind where they need to be they are still way behind where they need to be financially so in this teaching one of the things you will see is that but the help of the spirit through the scriptures you will understand how come you're where you are financially but also you will understand what you have to do today so this teaching is going to work if you make a promise to yourself to be willing to do something about what you've heard all right so third john verse two third john verse two the bible says this beloved i wish above all things that you may prosper and the word prosper is very simple god the apostle says I want you to do well now he says something this way which is this is this is the complication of the verse he says I wish you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers that means that the way you prosper is going to be in proportion to your soul so if your soul is not prospering you will not prosper he says hey this is what i want for you i wish you prosper so the apostle is saying that i know you have this great job but i want you to do better but you're going to do better based on what goes on in your soul he says i know your finance is really great hey so it's almost as if it's conditional this is a very challenging scripture because in one area it's a real prayer but the prayer is conditional he says i want you to prosper but you're going to prosper as your soul prospers what does it mean by the soul the soul will refer to a lot of things but majorly metaphorically it will refer to your thinking it will refer to your mentality he says you cannot prosper beyond how much you are willing to to advance mentally let me say it this way the way i wrote it down i said your financial state is a reflection of your economic mental state so if god wants to bless you your blessing will be difficult beyond your financial state let me show you an example so this is what this is what is going on here today what is going on here today is that a lot of people want expansion they say so when they pray they're praying for all those millions they're praying for all these hundreds of thousands of dollars but their mind is so small it cannot contain what god wants to do that's why god said to abraham in genesis he says as far as your eyes can see just the same thing john said in another words he says as far as your eyes can see i would what give to you listen to me you can catch some fish in certain waters yes or no exactly so if your mind is small there are fishes you can catch with a small mind there are finances that you cannot get even though you're praying this is what many of us are doing can i have my examples can i have my examples no 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 not you you guys are very far from the example can i get the stool okay we, we, we can bring it yeah, no, no, you can give it to me thank you thank you that's fine and i brought buckets of water so you can put that behind behind me all i wish is that i have the baby because this is what this looks like this is camera can you get this or we need to put on the stool for those watching online are you okay michael can you get this you need to come on the stage or something okay so this is what it this looks like many people are praying for big things financially but their mentality is so small so this is this is simple this is a bat in case many of you may not know it maybe from your country but in my country this is what we used to bat babies and 
when we put the baby inside because the baby may not be able to fit into the big bowl may be too big so what we do is that we pour the water inside like this we pour the water inside like this but guess what when the baby start growing we stop batting him here because he's grown many of you this is what you want you want to you want to become a financial giant but you're still swimming in the bathtub for a baby you want to become a financial so you want to many of you did in fact this is what you said i'm praying for this i'm praying for that financially i'm hoping this will happen but where are you fishing you're fishing the bathtub there are fishes that cannot be caught in some places when i was younger there'll be people that will fish you know in in the yard that is waterlogged and they will catch all the small fish and small fish and small fish but people that catch the real deal fish they don't fish in small ponds why because the kind of pond you have determines the kind of fish you catch the kind of mind you have the kind is the kind of money you attract so people are here you know I wish I could get a paper and just put up somebody here. Can I have someone small enough that can sit down in here? <laughs> you see how we're laughing? Because it's even unimaginable that an adult can sit in this. But where are most people sitting? Most people have grown in body, but they're not growing their financial mental state. They are still they are still thinking. How do I know? They are still thinking like the seven year old financial child they were like the 18 year old university guy they were they are 40 years old but their financial plan just looks exactly like what it was when they were 21 years old they are still fishing in the pond that's why as soon as they make money they go and buy something new because that's how young people behave when you give a child something he thinks of something to buy it's called financial immaturity but some people are older when they get a raise they want to buy a gucci shoe they want to buy brazilian air if they get more money they want to buy a benz it's the same it's the same behavior showing up in different things how does a child save he says i save into a p into into what do you call those small buckets no, no i want to call it what it yeah the local name you know you have this place you put money one by one you now that you're older is that not how you save money you, you put your money in the bank because when you put your money in the piggy bank or in the colo what happens it doesn't multiply now you're older you do the same thing you leave all your money in the bank and inflation eats your money away because you still have the same financial behavior and thinking like someone that is very young The question is this you are fishing in this water and you're hoping to become a shark you are staying in this water and you're hoping for big things don't you know that this mentality so this is your mentality is going to limit what goes on in it and the bible says as a man think it so if i want to see sharks i cannot see there are waters that don't contain sharks if i want to get give me some good fish i can catch in view give me some some big fish what do they call those big fish what is it croaker you you know you can get some tiny little fish in some in some area pond somewhere but if you want to get croaker fish that this big fish that they sell really big i don't know what they call them really what paracuda they're this real big fish you don't catch them there if you want to catch real fish you have to go to deep waters if the sea is that i'm saying the way your mind is you are fishing in shallow waters and one of the things is this and let me say this quickly so where are you fishing someone says i'm old you can be old and be fishing in shallow waters that's why have you asked yourself are my financial behaviors different from when i'm 25 from when i was 25 when I was 21 some of you the financial behaviors are the same only that it's change so instead of buying shoes you will not buy cars because they are more money but it's still the same financial behavior because as a child how do you know a child once a child has money it itches him to spend yes or no exactly once you have money and you eat to spend just know you're immature that's the truth and you know why it teaches you to spend as a child because you cannot delay gratification as an adult because you can't delay gratification 
but also because you want to show the people that you're out of the out of what the rat race and you really are not you just have something to show so apostle paul says hey your soul he says i wish you prosper as your soul prosper so if this is your mind you can't be swimming here he says i wish you prosper as your soul prosper god says i want to bless you but step out get into a bigger pond god says i want to increase you but step out into a bigger pond god says the water that's why did you notice luke chapter 5 the bible says that peter said we caught all night what did just christ say jesus christ says you've caught all night now launch into the deep you have been fishing in shallow waters he says launch into the deep you have been doing business of five and ten million it's time to say i want to start doing 100 and 200 million you have been applying for things that pay you 200k and 50k it's time to say i want to do one million and two million he said launch into the deep why don't we launch into the deep because number one we are afraid and that's the problem with fear because no amount of prayer can take away fear how does fear go faith coming by hearing by the end of the word of god once faith comes in fear goes out so if you want to take fear out of life it's not by praying you must receive an enough light from faith that makes fear dispossessed glory to god i said glory to god do, 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 you can help me take this for now do, do, do i have my blocks also we have it good so he says this so your financial prosperity I, I love the fact that you can pray but i notice that you guys pray a lot because all of you are on nlp now let me answer this question have a look up here people always ask this that why is it that people that are not godly do better than people that are godly well it's relative but i will tell you the reason why today the reason why people that seem godly don't do financially better financially um they don't do financially they're not financially above those that are not godly is this i will tell you the truth there's a mindset part of it but the second thing is this most people that have godly financially they don't have the mental drive in terms of capacity and drive you see there's this new saying in our country say cut so for me I'm not sure if it's real or if it's fake but listen to me human beings go to graveyard take their baths other people can see them they don't care if you tell a born-again Christian so they will never so so because it's two things number one there's something I've noticed about those people the drive they have maybe it's the heaven message that affect us that why should I have drive for physical things when I'm going to heaven? I'm telling you. So, if, 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 an unbeliever will try business doesn't work. He will try and try and check in. A Christian tries a business doesn't work. You know what it says? It's not the will of God that should do it. Because it keeps on interpreting the will of God by events. Which is not right. Then the second thing is this. So, there's the drive. Then the second thing is this the sagacity of their mind let me tell you you don't know what it means that someone can think of taking his bath in the graveyard it just tells you how far his mind can go no this is what the christian think of money i will just sit in my house and money will be jumping from the heavens that's how we think about money so you you see let me prove what i've said to you i've said it i think i said it here have you noticed in our country the average unbeliever guy at 21 22 can drive the average christian guy at 21 22 cannot drive someone said 28 you'll be surprised if i ask those that cannot drive here to stand up because it is just something that limits and let me tell you if it limits your mind it will limit your prayer if it limits your prayer to limit your manifestation glory to god so then because let me show you what i'm saying from the bible luke chapter 16 this is very powerful i, I think i've shared a couple of times here but we'll, we'll take it luke chapter 16 
verse 19. If you're getting blessed, you want someone to watch it, maybe you have a friend that's struggling financially, get them on the phone and say, hey, you can just watch this on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook right now, because it's going to really help them. Luke chapter 16 in verse 19. <laughs> this is one of the most amazing stories of the Bible. I know you've read it a lot of times, but I want to see this. The Bible says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain rich, there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gates, at his gate, full of sores. Now, question. Someone says, You see, Lazarus is a, is a righteous person, he doesn't have money. The sinner is the unrighteous person, he has money. And that's why I say there's a mindset issue. But question is that, do you know why Lazarus was poor? It's there. Why Lazarus was poor is in that statement. Why the rich man was rich is in that statement. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, Lazarus was laid at his feet. Verse 21 says, are you there? Let's read verse 21 to go. And Lazarus, desiring what? What? Did you notice the desire of Lazarus to be fed with crumbs? He was a righteous man, but his mentality was to be fed with crumbs. You will think that God is not faithful to Lazarus. You will not understand. Lazarus' problem was this. He said, I don't want to hustle. I don't want wahala. If I can be getting it and out, I'm okay. There are many of you here, and let me talk to the middle class. The problem with the middle class is this. The comfort is destroying your appetite for success. You will have two houses. You will have one. You have two houses, three brand new cars, two brand new cars. Then all of a sudden, your kids are going to good school. You say, I've arrived. My brother, life is more than two or three cars. You will just, there's just a way. There's a way you've lost the view. You'll earn 20 or 30 million. You're not thinking of this. How can this 20 become 300? You keep saying that I'm better than my mates. What are the mates you're comparing yourself to? We don't compare ourselves to our mates. We compare ourselves to the word of God. What does he say? He says, in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That's where we're going to. Brother, that's where we're going to. It's not about this local champion. Ah, You say, I'm the first my family to enter plane. How can that be an achievement? If not for poverty, some yardstick could not even become yardstick of prosperity. How can be you say I'm the first first to buy, to enter plane? It's an achievement. So once I live abroad, I'm better than you. Is it the living abroad that makes you better or the quality of life you are living? Indirectly, we celebrate poverty all the time. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. The other day I was invited to um to the house of the deputy british high commissioner so we had some kind of meeting there and you know i was not going to go because i had calendar clash i'm one of pastor he said to me say pastor b no matter what you do cancel and just honor the deputy british commission i said okay that's fine we sat down we spoke i think the 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 other um the, the consular general for netherlands was also there met all those people Someone say, so not to say. So I, I spoke to someone say, ah, Pastor, I have visa issue. Should we let me discuss it? I said, this is a problem. We come for significant discussion. Someone said, I have visa issue. Is that what we should be discussing? You don't understand. The way you talk shows where you are. I'm telling you, we're in a small meeting, 30 of us, maybe 25 of us, literally, other consulates, this and this and this, who are discussing global issues, partnerships, international partnerships, discussing about health and economy state or something. Someone said we have this kind of issue. But the reason why you keep talking about that is like at Lazar Lazarus. That's what you, because in, let me tell you something. If I ever apply to a country, I'll give an example. I, went to, I don't want to mention the name of the country, but one country. Well, you, I went for, they didn't refuse me. I went the first week. The guy looked at my documents and said, ah, I need one more document. He said, I should come back the next week document. I came back. He looked at it and said, I need one more document. He said, I should come back. I came back. So the third time, I came back. He looked at it again and said, ah, you need one more document. I stood up. I said, if you don't want to give me the visa, don't give me the visa. I'm not coming back here. I said, do I look like someone that wants to live in your country? I told him to his face. I said, do I look like that? If you don't want to give me my, give my passport, I'll go. He said, no, 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 I'm, that's not what I'm saying. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. He said, send your assistant to bring it the next day. And the assistant, I sent my PA, he took it, they submitted. They sent back my passport visa. Let me say something to you. One of the ways you will know you'll be successful is this. Even when you have nothing, you'll be confident. 
even the reason why is that as a man thinking there's nothing you no know, but you know that ah that's it and it's not a psychology or this and this and this you just know glory to god let's keep reading the story of lazarus shocking story the bible says and lazarus desiring to be fed with crumbs why is lazarus designed to fed the crumbs maybe because of experience you know the way you've seen so much poverty that when you make one million naira you say hey i've seen money but when you translate one million naira into dollars it's just two thousand dollars you know you've not seen money the minimum wage in america makes up the poorest people in america that work in about 20 something thousand dollars every year the poorest of the poorest minimum wage you know what that means in nigerian terms of money that means the poorest people in america earn about 13 million every year and many of you earn 13 million a year and you fail as if the lord has opened the door and have arrived when we turn you to global scale you are amongst the poorest of the poorest i'm not saying you should not thank god for where you are i'm only saying that you may need to open up your mind a little Someone says, don't worry, when I travel to Canada, I'll become rich. It doesn't work that way. You know why? Location does not change a state. What happens when you travel is this. You just move from the minimum in Nigeria, which is very bad. Because minimum in Nigeria is bottomless. That means, you know, it can be zero. It can be 20,000. It can be 50,000. That's minimum in Nigeria. You move to minimum in that country you've gone to. So minimum there is 20 something you would day. But at the same time, you are still what? Minimum. So even all of you that live abroad, it's not enough to say, I've moved. No. If your life is going to change financially, your state of mind must change. Location does not change people. It's the state of mind that changes people. That's why Paul says, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospers. Romans chapter 2 says that be transformed by the renewal of the mind. So the major thing is this. People are praying but their mind is so small their mind is limited it's like that is like that child betting back bull just like that look at lazarus lazarus prayerful prayerful but his mind was that what listen to me some of you have debt you keep praying father help me to pay the interest you see how your mind is working as if interest and capital is big to god but in your mind the interest is so big you cannot even think of paying the capital so he said, Lord, help me pay the interest. Question, which was more difficult for God? Paying interest or paying capital? Which of them? None. Why can't you ask for capital? The reason why is this. Your mind cannot even conceive it. So you still ask, you keep asking Lazarus for crumbs that fall from the table. When you're looking for contracts in your, off, in your job, is it not crumbs you look for? You look for small, small contracts. The one nobody can fight for. That's what you look for. When you're looking for opportunities, you look for crumbs, crumbs, crumbs. It's, it's a thinking. So in your industry, it's crumbs you're looking for. In your job, it's crumbs you're looking for. In finances, it's crumbs you're looking for. Everywhere it's crumbs. Because you are pointing your hands to Lazarus right now. You're not looking at yourself. When they say we want to do um, what they call it, um, facial makeup job, is the people that will pay 20,000 you're looking for or do it on credit. The one that will pay 2.5 2. million, you don't find those ones. It's crumbs. Someone says, how do I find them? There's a way you position for what you're looking for. And this is why God tells us to give. You know why? One of the biggest things giving does is from being a beggar to a giver. It changes your mental position. So God says, I want you to be always a giver. That's why it says, it says that the, it says that it's always it's more blessed to give than to receive. Why? The giver is a is a mental position of a senior. So when you God God is trying to make you practice habit of generosity, habit of prosperity. God wants me to be able to drop money and walk away from it. That's the problem. He's trying to develop. What giving does is two things. Number one, it helps your saving culture. If you can tight, you can save. Because you've learned the principle of putting money aside. Then number two, you've learned the principle of just looking away. See, of transactions. So when someone is not a constant tight or giver, the problem is that they don't even understand what God is trying to do in their life. 
why if you're a tighter why is it difficult for you to save it's not difficult because you just say i tie to god and i tie to myself is that not all and you know the two of them are untouchable then the second thing he does is that when you're a giver the image of your mind you don't be a, you're, you can never be a giver and the moment of giving feels small once you are giving you always feel superior uh, do you know do you know that feeling you always feel as if yes i'm doing something significant and god is hoping that if that your mindset can become permanent your whole life will change glory to god i said glory to god so let's keep reading <laughs> the bible says and lazarus designed to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover dogs came and licked the sores let's let's read verse um let's um let's read verse 20 verse um 16 and it came to pass that the, ba- the beggar died and was buried by and was buried sorry the beggar died notice he was not buried though the reason why is that you will see it maybe it died and they just abandoned his body somewhere that show how poor it was the beggar died and was carried by angel into abraham his poverty did not determine his eternal destination but guess what the rich man died and was what the one that was buried Bible says was buried it was not a miss it was the fact that there was no barrier for lazarus he was so poor there was no barrier and guess what the bible says and in hell the beggar lifted up his eyes and being in torment he seeth abraham and lazarus in his bosom and he said unto him father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus that he may dip his hand even in hell he exercised authority over lazarus You know why in hell his mind was still the same the mind of i can expand i can dominate i can do lazarus got dead lazarus was in abraham's bosom there's no conversation recorded of lazarus talking to abraham because lazarus was always desiring crumbs rich man got to hell even in hell he says hey guy we are here now too late let's negotiate <laughs> in hell he said father he spoke said father abraham i'm in torment he said my boy is there he said send him he do you know he didn't even ask us if he wants to come or not he just took it for granted that who are you lazy that you not come he said send him when abraham said no i can't send him he said okay that did not fail negotiate again <laughs> this guy was a proper salesman if the first because he doesn't have to give up he said that okay my brother sisters and children are there please don't let them come here he kept on negotiating i'm just showing you how the mind works so you keep saying that hey they are born again this they are not doing that they're not doing this they're not doing that let me tell you something eh? many of you say i've received blessing the economics of this world you don't even understand you know what i'm talking about you don't even understand how money is flowing if they ask you today what is what is the oil price what is nigerian budget because you are praying for financial prosperity the budget of a nation you don't know what it is i want to ask you the budget of a nation shows where the government will put money in where should you be positioned you don't know what the budget is you are not even following the conversation okay what was last year's budget what was this year's budget what is this budget And you say, Father, I'm doing it. You know, it's not working. Listen, there are some streams that dried up. You can see that's dried up not by revelation, by budget. You can tell that government is no longer spending here. This stream is drying up. Where is the stream opening right now? Globally, health infrastructure is exploding globally. Globally, IT is exploding globally. Globally, security is exploding. Either cyber security or fiscal security. Before you even pray, use common sense. Praise the Lord. You know, some people don't even think about such kind of thing because it's crumbs they're looking for, Pastor. Which one is looking for budget? What do I need? All I need is something to, as far as I can eat. Can you see the problem? Once you're looking for crumbs, dogs will lick your soul. There will be embarrassment. Somebody say hallelujah. So what, what, what I'm telling you to pray, when I say, Lord, and you know, the mindset determines the prayer. Because I was, I was saying, NLP, pray that the Lord will hammer your name into the, mind of, into the ha- minds of your helpers. When I say that prayer, someone will be seen, someone will just come and give me 50K. Can you see how they're thinking? Because their thinking limits their prayer. 
that someone will come and give you 50k as a 35 year old man meanwhile son I, you know one time one billionaire called me after next level prayer he said i love the prayers he said but he said when you say god should move protocol for my sake he said i think those are prayer points that you were thinking of people like me i said why sir he said because all the people testify they say they need it they need it he said those are things you don't need protocol to be moved he said but when you need the british government or the american president to change a policy for you for penetration he said that's what we're talking about he said those are kind of these other things you're talking about just ten thousand dollars to solve the problem he said but these are things that even if you have money money cannot change it he said because of the pattern inside what am i saying to you even the way you pray is depend on how you think even the answers you're looking for your prayer is depend on what how you think if i tell you that i'm blessed <laughs> definition of blessing matter glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to god so so let's just get let's just jump quickly so how does the mind um limit us that does a does pk if you're there can you there's a diagram i want to show you then i i want my blocks you don't have more than that okay yeah you can just put one here yeah put one there put two here yeah put four here put it be, let, let him go backwards a little bit put four there yeah no need that, yeah that's fine four arrange four or uh, maybe you make it five yeah so what happens is this eventually eventually what happens is this is what mindset does we call them main wealth blocks wealth blocks so this is what it does as you go through life this is your financial journey you come across a word block it's a small one you may not even fix it you can just cross it then you come another one that is very difficult then you want to trip and fall then you come another mental block that is a high one and any lady that is wearing a skirt and high shoes here that cannot go over a long thing yeah you come please yeah l l let me show you what i mean let me show you what i mean because these are mental blocks can you stand over here so what are mental blocks this is a subconscious thinking system that limits your finances so they're there that's why the bible says you prosper even as your soul prospereth so watch this i think you should check the view of the camera because you're going to be backing us uh, you know maybe, maybe some other view maybe on the left or from the center okay so watch this now watch this now so she's coming okay so go, go. look at it so this is a me mental block yeah cross it you see she can you you see you see how she began to shake that's how people shake that's how you become shaky because you know then cross this one this is a mental block yeah you see now as speed is slower because your mentality breaks your speed negative mentality breaks your speed then she comes here so cross this one then that's the problem but you see that's a, i have to hold i don't know why you, you, you have to cross without holding me if you think you're going to fall t just stay there so someone says why am i stuck you're stuck because you're at your mind block so you've been able to cross all along you're stuck here because your mind block question let's go back and you go back to the first one because i want to explain what this is let's because of time let me just finish this matthew chapter 25 gives us a story of the virgins the foolish and what the wise question why didn't the foolish buy extra oil because of their mindset their mindset is that there's no need many of you are here you don't save is, is it enough it's not enough it's not enough it's your mindset <laughs> that you don't save when i was earning five thousand and i was saving because once you can tight you can what save that's what i told myself once i can tight i can save so you have that mind barrier because the difference between the foolish virgin and the wise virgin was this Someone says oh the foolish virgin don't have money they had money how do i know when the bridegroom came the bible says they went to buy 
that means there was potential to buy all along but their mindset did not think that was important why your mindset will show in your behavior the mindset is what going to show your behavior it's going to show you an actions let me give you some mindset and i'm going to explain how this works there's one mindset what is the mindset it's difficult to be rich do you have that my table do you, do you have it so there's a mindset that says it's what difficult to what talk to me how many of you understand what i just said now wave your hands let me even give you some mindset number one is difficult to be rich it's easier to make money in legitimate than legitimately yes or no i don't have enough to make more is that a mindset also of course another one says is this you cannot succeed in this country yes or no yes so those are mindset so let, let me tell you something look at this diagram the first diagram please the first one there are two of them just yeah the first one your mindset is based on the belief where do you get the belief from the belief is something that you grew with it came with you it's through your experiences so let me give you a good example i just want to give an example you know it was it was a divorced parent it was a young girl so at the weekend the father the mother would take the young girl to go to the father to spend the weekend and it will come back after the weekend back to the mom but the mother was using the girl to exploit the father for money but the father did not really have a lot so the mother would tell the girl huh when you see your father tell him you need you need fifty thousand let's use dollars you need two hundred dollars or hundred dollars for school shoes for this in school for that in school when the girl comes the fair will tell her father the father knows that ah, but there's no extra bill but because he's trying to be a nice father and doesn't want to cause rifts and he knows the child will suffer if he doesn't get the money from him it will give him but guess what they saw the girl saw the girl saw his father being in pain reluctantly painfully giving her the money you know what Richard in the girl's mind for you to have money you have to manipulate and cause others spin so the girl grew up and every time she wants to do something she just found herself pulling back because the belief is this for me to be rich i have to manipulate and what i have to cheat to do that once you believe that kind of thing what emotion will you come with the emotion you will come with is so negative that every time you the emotion will be depressing that ah oh, I have to cheat to get better i don't want to do that then what will happen what will be the action if your, your action is that i should not do anything that like start a business because i have to cheat to what to get money did you see how that affects you when you think money is difficult what happens as an action there's no point starting a business it's very difficult i now will not make it through because in your mind you think money is difficult let me put go to the second diagram the second diagram what's the second diagram the belief is this this is christian belief this is what christians do this is the this is the issue of cuts because people want cut soap now so this is about cutting soap the belief is this it's easier to make money illegitimately yes or no people don't want to talk because they're in church yes, yes, yes. yeah but let me tell you something what do you get the belief from it's a lie who makes money illegitimate and it's easy is he an arm robber do you know the risk attached to their job is he hush puppy do you know the risk attached to their job people that are cutting soap they are washing those people wash in graveyard no matter where they are they must go every thursday at 12 midnight they can die on the road they can be arrested and you think it's easy Let me tell you something. Even people that do not, even people that do not admit they work hard. Have you seen Yahoo boys before? Have you seen people that kidnap? People that kidnap work hard. They know if they catch me, I die. They say, so let's die. But you are the one that says it's easy. 
those boys that do yahoo they will get one girl to form as a girl they will get this they will look for accounts here they will look for accounts there they will transfer sometimes they transfer they also come back to them so say, how do you know you need to know <laughs> i'm telling you but but the thing is this but for some reason we say it's 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 it's, it's what they call it it's easy that's what we believe but guess what once we believe that what do we say emotionally i can be a genuine christian and what and be wealthy because i cannot what cut corners so if you want to do something what well, let me worry John. you know me, i can't cut corners there was the action or decision isn't to what start a business why because i will not succeed why because i can't cut corners so all of you see the actions why don't you go for a big contract because you know i can't i don't have I don't know this that's why so what most of you see that holds you back are in the action what i want to do is to go back and say where is the wealth block in my mind holding me back so this is a word block so this is a word block so the word block is here so guess what it's a small thing so you cross it then it gets bigger yeah then you what you begin to stagger you see you you begin to stagger then it gets here then you stop let's close this morning are you blessed already? How yeah. I many of you know this month to be fire, sir? So this is yours. L- leave the diagram on the board because everybody must write. Everybody right now. Y- you have assignment today. All of you online, get paper and barrel. Everybody must write. Write the beliefs, the negative beliefs that hold you back. Ha- write it. Then write the emotions that come with it. Then write the decisions you need to make. The same thing. When it's time to give. Why don't we give? Because the belief says, if I give, I will lose. So when they say there's giving time, there's a f- awkwardness. You know that awkwardness? There's a sadness you feel. You have been excited in the church. You want to say, tight and offering time. You either log off or you just become sad. Because fundamentally the thing is it they have come to take now but if you see that giving expands my capacity giving builds my habits when it says giving time what do you do hey hey it's my time my time has come again to build the right habits so because you feel negatively what will happen to your decision every time it's offering time i will subconsciously log off so i don't feel bad i'll so i don't feel that i'm not tightening. if i'm watching online i'll just tune off so that nobody talks to me and all of those kind of things so when they say it's off in nlp i'm just, just tune off because i don't want to feel bad and you forget that there's a reason why you feel that way because in your mind you built it that way hallelujah next week we'll continue when you do this assignment you'll bring it next week we will not discuss how to begin to remove all the blocks so that your financial road will be what an express your financial road will be what an express what an express let's pray stand on your feet